Chris from Chris Must List. I'm currently here in Iraq, and I came down this like dark little dungeon-like area, uh, past all of like this old electronics and like radio players, and, and, and through all of the trash as I as I go side step to side step, I came across this world-class, top-notch, historic gun collection here in Kurdistan, Erbil, Kurdistan to be more specific, and I'm excited to share with you. The gentleman's a little occupied, so in a few minutes he's gonna close up shop and give us all of his attention so we can really ask those detailed questions and learn more about the different guns that he has to offer. I'm telling you, I took a peek inside this place and you do not want to miss out on today's video. I'm excited. <laughs> Okay, it's a new day. The sun is shining. It feels damn good to be back outside. We're leaving the nice concrete or asphalt paving to go off-road here. And we're on the hunt for the secretive outdoor gun market. What do you think? What are our chances of finding it? 100% chance we're gonna find it. We find it, but I don't know. It's like we are allowed to fill them or not. Well, we found the market itself, but it's now empty. So our timing might be off. We're gonna go a little closer and check it out. This is used for target practice. Look. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, this one maybe, yes. <laughs> I'll let Sardar walk. Uh, in front of me this time. Look, I'm, day, look, look, day. look, look. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. Go, go, go. <laughs> day, day, you, huh? <laughs> yes. I put my camera away. The last thing I want to do is get shot at on this beautiful morning. So. Because I don't come to this market. I don't know what's their situation. I just came on on, on your request to see what's the, what's going on here. Uh, like three, four months ago, they were, they were, they were, like, government were trying to close. See if I can find anything interesting to make a story. Yeah, it looks like it's been a while. This is heartbreaking. As we walked up, all I could envision was the content that we could have created here. Yeah, look. We're in the right place. Guns, 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 guns. Here we have uh, an MP5 uh, submachine gun. And this is from where? This one is from Germany and it sells for $2,500. I'll just take you down the list really quickly. Here's another Chinese-made AK-47, and this one sells for $1,000, $1,000. Right next to it, we have basically the same gun without the extended shoulder stock. It's broken. This is a bargain at $500. Go down further, more and more uh, weapons, uh, machine guns, pistols, all sitting out. And this just goes on and on and on. It's a great story, man. It's <laughs> empty. Nobody, no, people are not selling guns and people are not buying it. So no, we are wait, wait a second. Let me correct you. The, yeah. Just because they're not being sold here doesn't mean that these people didn't get up and just at least, at least move to a newer, a newer least, location. I mean, I, I'm believing in this way. It's not easy, so it's, it's better. So when it's more difficult, it's, it's better. So less people can get it. Yeah. But this, um, for those people like in North America, this is like a flea market for guns. Any type of guns, ammunition, uh -huh. uh, rocket launchers. This is, this is actually very similar to Baghdad. I went to the black market of guns, uh, and there was a warning that any photography would be like instant death. Wow. So they warn. Okay. There's a warning, right? Yeah. They don't. They don't fuck around. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm sure it's empty. They have not left anything inside. But. but this is part of the hunt. You can't be a treasure hunter and not be willing to hunt a bit. It's you. That's, that's not me. Already left. I don't know what happened to the guy. With no magazine. More evidence. Mm -hmm. So up here you could imagine like guns being tied up and just hanging for sale. Well, you win some and you lose some. Okay, it's Friday around noon and it's normally a holiday, but we're going to attempt to make our way to the most famous, can we can we say it's the most famous, a gun shop here in Erbil. I like his style. We're going the wrong way on a one way. And he said, no problem. Sometimes I got to go one way on the wrong way on the one way. I'm assuming we're close. 
so what is crazy amongst all this garbage and old stuff there's a secretive gun market here that has everything from like rocket launchers to uh, little pistols to machine guns you name it they got it and if you're not local you would never ever <laughs> have any idea what's in store for you first and foremost thank you for allowing me to come in and film how long has this family been in business my grandfather was doing that in the 70s and up to now it's we still working in this yeah uh, the first one is his father the second one the younger one is uh, his brother these guns are not for sale this is all part of the family collection <laughs> Yes, it's only for beauty as a as a historical thing. I see this little gun is is popped out. Yeah. He says this is called uh, shakush. Shakush it means like if you translate it, it means like king uh, king killer. Is it because it's so easy to conceal? It's so small. Yes, that's why they. Call it's called it the king killer. Yeah, this is maybe eighty or ninety years old. It's called uh, tantrigov. It's Russian made. It's called jersey. It's machine gun. It's German made. It's made in that time, in 1942-1943, but like recently, uh, the Kurdish fight against the ISIS, this, this gun has been distributed on the Kurdish Peshmerga Kurdish forces to fight against the ISIS. Is he able to show us a few unique guns? Uh -huh. So for example, one of the unique ones is this one belongs to uh, Se Second World War, so it's been used in that time. and. He says, this is st sterling, this is Indian, this is also old. It's like a like hand grenade, he says, uh, throwing something like hand grenade. So it's like a ball and it's uh, getting in and then uh, it becomes pieces like hand grenade. So this is like, uh, this is like a hand grenade. It's like the, the, pilot, the pilots or like the fighters, like they had this, like, yeah. Uh -huh. Nobody has brought any of this to repair. All, the only thing, the only one which we have seen it is this one that we have it. This Allah. is called Barabil and this is German. Ah, this is also very old. But this is also being distributed recently on the British in the Ministry of the Interior. Maybe it belongs to 1930s, like it's made in that time, but recently been distributed. And what about the oldest gun? Is it the... Ah. So you bring a like a yeah, handful powder, you would put it in, and then there's pieces of iron, uh -huh. and then powder again, and then a little bit again pieces of iron, and then you 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 fire it, and then it's 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 uh, yeah. Uh, he says like there's different sizes, and this is the big one of this. Sorry, where this were you? One. Up there. Now this, you would have to be very close to the person, I'm assuming. The aim is not too good. He says that, yeah, it's, 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 maybe it's just like... Uh, he says this one is going far. Sorry, we're pointing at this, this one, one here? Yes, 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 yes. This on the right with the horse. What is that? Is that a walking cane? Nice. This is like a sword, like uh, a... This is, this is also like like something for kings or something like this, because it's at the same time hand walk, yeah. walking and also, and also an, uh, a sword or a knife. This is what grabbed my attention. Yeah. This has been used against the fight of, uh, of ISIS by the Kurdish forces. It's like anti-tanks. Okay. This is like already fired. This is not working anymore. And what about this? The same. Awachandaria. 
So they were very recently used then? Yes. In, two, in, two, in 2013 and 14 it's been it's given to Peshmergas to use it against ISIS. Now when ISIS came into the neighborhood, did he find that a lot more people were looking to purchase guns? Yes, people, they have this for both purposes, like for fighting even they, they, they in the front line, for example, the volunteers, and also for their for their uh, protection at home, they, they use this. What type of guns were ISIS in control of? They like very advanced stuff of in terms of machine guns and a sniper, snipers and yeah, all, all, all these guns. But would you say the guns in comparison were roughly equivalent or did they have a higher quality of gun than the people here in the military? I see they had more advanced uh, machine guns and, and, and guns and in general everything because Peshmergas they were at the first at the beginning they were only fighting against ISIS with the very light uh, guns and but only later that the coalition forces gave them to Peshmergas the heavy machine guns and, and stuff like that. This is definitely the fanciest gun that we've seen. I made it like this. Otherwise it's plain black. So, But I just made it this design over it. It can fire many, many bullets at the same time. And this photo looks very iconic. Who, who is this in the photo here? Is this your father? Our children. Yes. His father. Same location that we're at right now? Yes, in the same shop, but it was smaller. But now we have taken off this. Uh, oh, the middle. This used to be only this, yeah. I do have one more request. Mm. I've always wanted to hold a rocket launcher. Can him and I take a picture and I can put the rocket launcher on my shoulder? You don't need so much power uh, to control this when you shoot it. But he says behind there should be like 25 meters empty. Yeah, nobody behind. And this nobody. is scope used? I'll be honest, I feel like a powerful man with this in my hand. Has he shot something like this? He must have. Never, I, I, I never He said my father was going to the front line just to even to, to repair the guns. He never even, okay. yeah. Maybe my father for during repairing to for testing he, he has to shoot something but there's really not much to it. It's just a hollow. Look. It's completely hollow. Mm -hmm. So there's not much to it. Ah, this is about six months that the government has closed it down. Do we know why it was closed? About six months ago they closed down at the, by the decision of uh, uh, Mr. Barzani, uh, so the president. So uh, it's because uh, they want to reduce the number of the murders that, that yeah. He says this is a reason that the, the, the murder goes... Uh, yeah. Killing goes up, increases. That's why. So when it's easy, so yeah. So he says, for example, in there probably with a very small argument, people are killing each other. Yeah. So here we have these things. For example, it's just for beauty. It's already used. It's only yeah. one time yeah. used, and yeah. it's not for selling and buying. Yeah. There's, so. there's no doubt. It's, it's very scary and dangerous. If anybody can walk into a market, and without a license or without ID or without anything purchase an item like this and purchase any items like this so I understand why the government uh, closed down the current location but that black market in Baghdad has been open over 30 years and it remains so that's it I just wanted to share a little bit of my story I won't take up your time thank you very much Shukran I'm excited <laughs> Really excited to share with you guys this historic uh, little hole in the wall gun shop. Uh, it was an exciting find, and I'm really excited that I got the opportunity to share it with you guys here on YouTube.